Hello beautiful friends and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I really wanted to share with you guys some uncommon 2022 goals that I have. These things are really important for me to continue to practice and develop and to just implement in my life because I think that they will serve as the foundation for all of my other goals that I want to accomplish for this year. Three year goals, five year goals, just like life goals in general, I guess you could say. And I didn't hear a lot of like, I didn't hear these mentioned in any of like the 2020, 2022 goals that I have for this year type of video so I really wanted to talk about them let's just jump right in a lot of these goals are what I like to call self-improvement or personal development type of goals I think they're super important and I just think that we need to talk about them a little bit more so first things first boundaries and self-love the past few years especially during quarantine I learned the importance of boundaries more importantly I learned that I severely lacked boundaries and through this exercise of setting boundaries I realized that I actually had really good boundaries back in the day years ago and for whatever reason those completely fell apart so I think boundaries are super important I think it's how you show yourself self-love it's how you show yourself respect but it's also how you teach other people what you will and will not allow in your life some things that I wish I knew when I started this work on boundaries is that some people will take it very very personal and it's not about them they might guilt trip you they may say things like you've completely changed or you didn't have a problem with this before or anything like that to make you like feel bad to make you doubt yourself to make you you know question this boundary that you've set but I need you to know that that is okay and that is not a reason for you to backtrack that doesn't mean that you stop doing the work the work is hard for a reason you are changing you're saying no I don't allow XYZ anymore and that is perfectly okay in the beginning setting boundaries is very uncomfortable it's uncomfortable for you and it's gonna be uncomfortable uncomfortable for the people around you your relationships will change and that just comes with the territory but I cannot emphasize enough the importance of like continuing to do the work to trust yourself and to not backtrack on these changes that you're trying to make in your life something else about boundaries is that you can't expect other people to respect and honor your boundaries if you yourself are constantly disrespecting and not honoring your own boundaries so it's really important for you to stand firm in these boundaries that you set for yourself but also understand that when it comes to boundaries you have to respect other people's boundaries with the boundary work i also realized that i lack self-love i thought i knew self-love but i really didn't i wasn't showing myself self-love it just it was just jacked. It was completely jacked up. <laughs> that had to change. I knew that that was something that I, I really wanted to change and learn um, how to how to love myself like unapologetically. And I've been learning also the difference between self love and self compassion, which is super super important. They seem so similar, but they're very different. And I've shown this before in previous vlogs, but I have the self love workbook for women that I have been working through, and I'm loving all of the exercises in here, and it's really helping me to exactly what it says release self-doubt build self-compassion and embrace who you truly are so I mean I'm like halfway through the book but so far I really really love it so when it comes to boundaries and self-love those are things that I definitely want to continue working on and just building up more in 2022 next I have routines now this can be any routine that I decide that I want to set for myself but for me personally um I have a really great morning routine I've mentioned this before but I I don't have a good night routine whatsoever and how you settle down in the evening I think is a huge indicator to how your next day will go especially when you wake up in the morning specifically so there's certain things in my morning routine that I really want to establish in my nighttime routine so for example in the morning first thing I do is I don't check my phone I actually do my morning pages which is kind of like upstream of consciousness brain dump I got that through working on the artist way so it's three pages of just brain dumping I'll either do that first or I do my gratitude or I'll do like some type of devotional but I do not check emails text messages or anything like that before 10 a.m. that's a rule that I have for myself because I know what I need in the morning and I don't think engaging with those things first thing is actually healthy or good so for the nighttime routine I kind of want to implement something similar where I'm not and I do this a little bit but I could I could definitely do better there's no screen time after a certain time like 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. or something like that and just like reading 
eating more and doing more things to help me relax my mind so that I can actually fall asleep and have decent sleep because sometimes I just don't. But routines also when it comes to consistency with working out like what my fitness routine is, what my what my routine is for getting work done, what my routines are for prepping for auditions, routines for creating. I, I just feel like I just need to tighten that up a little bit more so I want to I want to honor routines. Next I have learning more about my body and emotions and I'll explain to you what I mean by that. Since starting therapy and like doing all of this inner healing type of work I realized that I'm actually not good at articulating my feelings so I want to learn to better understand my body and the emotion that I'm having and properly articulating that recognizing what my body feels like in the moment like what part of my body is this emotion affecting if you will i'm more compassionate towards other people's emotions than i am with my own i realize i can definitely name it and i can definitely acknowledge it but i don't I, I wasn't allowing myself to actually feel this emotion like actually sit in it for a little bit and i used to but whatever happened along the way i just I, I just stopped doing that and i think that's what happens when you're a people pleaser you put other people's feelings um you know uh, above your own and so you get to a point where it's like you don't even recognize your own emotions anymore learning more about my body and, and learning more about what emotions feel like and instincts and all of that would just help me have a better relationship with myself but also help me to have better relationships with other people and overall i think it will just lead to less self-doubt and just like trusting my gut instincts a little bit more next i have self-awareness and capacity capacity has been such a big word for me since starting like boundary work and all of that stuff so when i say self-awareness i literally mean self-awareness with everything self-awareness with my own thoughts with my own feelings with my body with insecurities and not enmeshing with anyone else's and not taking on anyone else's um you know shit basically the self-awareness to know like when i've messed up when i'm wrong you know the self-awareness to know hey i need help and asking for help it's like literally self-awareness about just everything in general and when i talk about capacity it's in the same way acknowledging the capacity that i have with my time with my feelings my everyday routines my mental capacity i think that that's something that we we, we kind of overlook again and it, and it goes hand in hand with boundaries and respecting boundaries and honoring your own boundaries so it's just recognizing and acknowledging what my capacity is and being honest with myself about it and not trying again to be a people pleaser if i'm not in the right mental headspace or emotional headspace once you start doing this work you will realize that your people i can't believe i'm saying this because when it was told to me i was like this is total bullshit but when you do this work your people will become clear it will be clear who respects your boundaries and doesn't guilt trip you about it who's encouraging your growth who's encouraging you to change who's guiding you along in that process and the way that you communicate with one another will be different as well because you'll have this understanding it means capacity with my time with my energy with my emotions with where my mind is at it means checking in with myself before interacting with another person whether that is through email a phone call or text message or video or what have you making sure that you're coming in with like a stable calm mind truly being a good active listener these goals are life goals right these are these are things that we can all work on at any time throughout our life I don't think that the work ever really ends I just think that it changes as we change as our lives change and there'll be moments where we're really good at these things and then there'll be times when we're not so for me personally I feel like these are really important goals for me to have in 2022 just to continue working on them to continue developing them to continue being in that place where self-care and self-love is not something something that I do because I've already been burnt out and I allowed my boundaries to just be completely torn apart. It's more about doing the things that are preventative. So those are some of my very uncommon 2022 goals that I want to work on with self-love and, and boundaries and self-improvement and just bettering myself in every way that I possibly can and not going back on that and not feeling bad and, and not feeling like I need to make everyone happy and say yes to everything and things like that. These are things that are really going to help me as a person like i said they really serve as the foundation to help you show up for yourself every single day so that you can have the routines and the good habits and the overall good feeling to help you do the work for everything else that you want to do if that makes any sense but 
along with all of this these are all represented in my vision board I did do a video on vision boards so if you missed that I will link that here in the cards my vision board is complete I have it here I also for the first time ever did a digital board so I have my wallpaper my screensaver on my desktop and also on my phone are many little digital vision boards if you want a video on that I'm more than happy to create one but I'll do it like in a vlog or something but I'm definitely a physical vision board type of person but these areas of self-love and boundary work and all of that is reflected on my vision board because that's something that I really want to work on it's super super important to me if you guys enjoyed this video which i hope you did then make sure that you give it a thumbs up leave me a comment down below and let me know if you have started your boundary work or if you are struggling with boundary work or if you're still new to it like where are you on this journey of like boundaries because when i tell you that it was huge for me it was huge it was massive and don't forget to subscribe if you guys haven't already done so i would love to have you join this youtube family of mine we keep it real over here i love to talk about real life shit and show everything <laughs> the highs the lows the lessons in my vlogs and i would love to have you be a part of that thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next one bye